I'm Mrs. C. And he asked me what my real name was. It's Crookshank, but that's kind of long. So Mrs. C. I am with the University of Nebraska. Today you are starting a University of Nebraska 4-H science project called, hands up if you can say this word. What do you think? Embology. Embology, that's close. Embry. Embryology. Very good. So we're starting an, a unit on embryology. <laughs> All right, embryology. You probably don't know this, but the university does consider you to be students of the university for the next four weeks. So we are going to use some kind of big words. Can they handle it? Can they handle it? Yeah, they can handle it. They can handle it. All right, embryology. Kids, anytime you see this ology at the end of the word, yeah. that just means the study of. So this is going to be a study of an. Hands up if you think you know. What do you think? Uh, eggs. What's this word? Uh, embryo. embryo. Okay, now, here's one of those really hard words. This is the hardest one I'll ask. Who can tell me? Hands up if you think, and you know what, and I'd really like some good guesses. What's an embryo? Some good guesses. What do you think an embryo is? A life cycle of a chick. A life cycle of a chick. That's a great guess. Do I have other guesses? What do you think an embryo is? Um, I think that embryo is that it's just the life cycle of any type of a plant. They oh, get. he's thinking it's just a life cycle of just anything. Could be a plant or an animal or very good. How about one more guess? Back there. Oh, you have a poster. <laughs> Do you, is there a poster back there? Yeah. Huh. Okay, I want you to remember this. And very good. An embryo is the very beginnings of life. Very, very beginnings of life. Okay? Now we're going to study a chicken embryo. Could you have a dog embryo? No. Okay, hands up if you think no, you could not have a dog embryo. Hands up if you think no. <coughs> hands up if you think, well, yes, you could have a dog embryo. Okay. All right, now. Can you tell me why, why could you have a dog embryo? Do you know? No? Everything has a beginning. And you know what, and I, that's a tricky question. I asked you a tricky question. Because, because I brought things in an eggshell, I didn't want you to think that an embryo always comes inside an eggshell. You can have, a dog has a very beginning of life. Very, very beginnings. Could you have a frog embryo? Yes. yes. Were you and I ever an embryo? Yes. The very beginnings of life. Okay. So for our project, we're going to study a chicken embryo. I have brought you a dozen, of, but these are kind of special. These are fertile eggs. These come from a, from a flock or a group of chickens where there's both a mother chicken called a, hands up if you know, what's a mama chicken called? What's a mama chicken? A hen. And a father chicken called a, oh, yeah, rooster. rooster. These come from a flock of chickens where there's both a hen and a rooster. Grocery store eggs cannot be fertile. They come from a group of chickens or a flock of chickens where there are only hens. So they can't be fertile. This is tricky because I put them in a grocery store container just to keep them safe. They are not from the grocery store. You could not put a grocery store egg in, in an incubator. Well, they will not hatch. They are not fertile. Have to have both a hen and a rooster. Okay. So I'm going to leave these with you. A dozen fertile eggs. They will become your responsibility. If I were to leave them with Mama Hen, what would she do to take care of them? Do you know? Can you guess? What would, what would she do? What would she do? Feed them. She would feed them. No, that's a good guess. She would sit on them so they would be warm. Very first thing she's going to do is sit on them. That's a good guess. First thing she's going to do is sit on them to keep them. So we take our first clue from that. We know these little embryos need warmth. Now, you and I can't sit on them. Just not going to work. So how are we going to keep them warm? Who can tell me how we're going to keep them warm? Good. Uh, the, the box or whatever. The box? Do you know what that box is called? Yeah. Nah? Do you know what it's called? Incubator. incubator. Okay. We're going to keep them warm in an incubator. Between 99 and about 102 degrees. You are going to have to watch. Do, do you all know how to read a thermometer? Yeah. Okay, you know, if you don't, have your teacher show you quickly because 
you need, you're going to need to monitor that. If it's cooler than that, the chicken won't, ha won't develop correctly. If it's hotter than that, it will kill it. So between 99 and 102 degrees, all right? Second thing mama hen does, she turns the eggs. She turns them with her beak, she turns them with her feet. Now she knows, she has no idea why she's doing that. But she does it. Why do you suppose it's important that the eggs be turned? Who hasn't answered for a while? Why do you think it needs to be turned? Because if, the, if, if it's only um, in one spot and it doesn't roll over, it might get stuck to that. Oh, she says because if it's just in one spot, if we don't roll it over, the little embryo could get stuck. That is absolutely right. All right, so I did you kind of a favor. Hopefully, can you see that X clear back there? Yep. Yeah. You know, and if you can't, you will when it's your turn to turn, okay? We put, Mommy Hen didn't do that for you. I did that for you. I put an X on the egg. So, you're going to have to turn the eggs. We know, we look at Mama, we're taking our cues from Mama. It needs to be turned. Three times a day, are they going to turn their own? Will they be on a rotation or a, okay, you're going to take turns. You're going to take turns turning the eggs. Should be turned three times a day, morning, probably around lunchtime, and then right before you go home, okay? Three times. We'll put them in the incubator, X is up. If it's your turn to turn, I just want you to very carefully turn the eggs so you can't see the X anymore. And then if you can't see the X and it's your turn, just carefully turn it. Now, we do know these eggs are fragile. What does fragile mean? Who can tell me what fragile means? Yeah. Um. To, um, like, very valuable? Valuable? Well, yes. What's an, that's about half right. What's fragile? That it can break easily. It breaks easily. Now, I, I have dropped eggs. It can happen to anybody. Ew. And you just feel terrible when it happens. You know, I would just, you know, be a good friend. If somebody drops an egg, don't be angry. Just know that accidents happen. But you're all going to be really, really, really careful. And also, if the person's turning the eggs, just be careful not to bump them. Help each other out. Okay, so three times a day we're going to turn these eggs. Now, you all have a forced air incubator. They do not need to be rotated, just turned. Okay? Makes life so much easier. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so they just, we're just going to turn them. Third thing Mama Hen does, and again, she has no idea that she does this. She brings humidity to the egg. Who can, t this is another one of those hard words. Who can tell me what humidity is? Hands up if you think you know. Okay, we've got half. She's got half. What's the other half of humidity? Um, it's like warm. Warm. Water. All right. Warm water. Humidity. Moisture. Water in the air. Did you put water in the bottom of your incubator? Did you put warm water, or cold water, or hot water? Okay, warm water. All right, we need, we need it to be warm if you can set it out so that it's room temperature, that's even better because we don't want to make the temperature go down or up in that incubator. Warm water. Now, how did you put water in your incubator? Did you have a cup? Did you go to the sink? Did you, you turned on the faucet? So how does Mama Hen bring humidity to her eggs? Can she go to the sink and turn on the tap and? No. How do you think maybe she brings humidity? No, she sits on them. She sits on them, yeah. Like when she sits on them, it kind of gets sweaty in that time. You know, she's, she just said when she sits on them, she gets sweaty. And, and that's a good guess. It's not right, but it's a good guess. What's another way she could bring humidity? She puts it in the rain. She has the eggs in the rain. Those are good guesses. Okay, what's in the grass sometimes in the morning? Water. Dew. So, you know, if she gets up in the morning to get something to eat and walks through the grass and the weeds, she picks up some of that dew, some of that water up in her feathers, and then she goes and she sits on her nest and her body heat warms it up, and it, so she's bringing humidity. Okay? Sometimes it's so humid, there's so much moisture in the air, it's just her feathers pick it up just from walking through the air. So, you will need to keep warm water in the bottom of your incubator. If we don't keep warm water in there, the eggshell and there's a little thin skin right inside the shell can dry out. If they dry out, they can get so hard that the chick is not strong enough to get out of the egg. We have to have humidity to keep that moist. If they're not strong enough, they'll die inside the egg. So you are going to keep them warm between 99 to 102. You're going to turn them three times a day so they don't stick, so all sides get warm. 
and you're going to make sure that there's humidity in the incubator so the chick can get through when it's time to hatch. All right. We'll pretend this is an egg. Mm -hmm. All right. Right inside the egg, I'm going to, oh, maybe, can you see that? Yeah. I know. <coughs> is this a dry erase? Yeah. Okay. Is that better? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right inside the egg is a thin skin called a shell membrane. It pulls away from the back of the egg. Do you know what this is? That's the air cell. These are all going to be on your unit test. I'm just giving you a heads up. Shell membrane, air sac. Do you know that kind of orange thing inside the egg? Hands up, hands up. If you think you know it. Who hasn't answered? In the red shirt. Yolk. The yolk. And then there's this clear stuff that turns white when we cook it. Do you know what that's called? Let me see, who can I pick on? Uh, uh, white. Egg white? <laughs> okay, all right, I want you to learn the official word for it. I don't know, I hope you can see this. Albumin, Albumin. everybody say it. Albumin. That, it. That's on your test, I don't want anybody to miss that. Albumin, it's the egg white. The albumin is full of water. Remember one of you said, well, the mama has to feed her babies? They just don't even have mouths yet. Somebody said that, yeah? It's inside the egg. Yeah. So they get lots of nutrition from the yolk and lots of water from the what's it? albumin. Yep, there's a lot of protein in that too, but for right now we're worried that they need lots of water. So food, water, and just like you and I, they need oxygen. How are we going to get oxygen? Good gas, air sac, but we don't have a nose yet. Oh, 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 your mouth? Mouth? No mouth yet. There's no mouth yet. Their feet? Feet? Okay. The eggshell. And when you look, you know what? Look at the back of your hands. Do you see little tiny holes? Uh -huh. Of course. The eggshell is just like that. It has tiny, tiny pores everywhere. So fortunately, that oxygen can move through. All right? Now the bad side of that is if you and I have cold germs on our hands or maybe flu germs and we handle this egg, those germs can also move through the shell. So you're going to want to always wash your hands before and after. All right? Before and after. On top of the yolk, we would see a little kind of whitish area called the germ spot. Okay, this is where life begins. It's on top of the yolk, not down in. This is where it starts. If we broke the grocery store egg, we would see the albumin, the yolk, little germ spot. If that egg's fertile, you really have to look, but you can kind of see it with a speck. There's the cells that start. Nothing would happen if we didn't warm it up. You could eat that egg, even if it is fertile. But as soon as we put it in the incubator and it starts to warm up, these cells begin to divide. And I mean thousands in a day. And this is the miracle. Before too long, the cells that are supposed to turn into the brain turn into the brain. Cells that are supposed to turn into the heart turn into the heart and the blood vessels, and the skin, and the bones, and the feathers. And in 21 days, we've got a chick. It all started with a little bit of warmth. In three days, we would start to see some little things like this come out. What do you think those might be? Feathers. Not feathers, nope. The cracks. the cracks of the egg. Cracks of the egg, good guess, but not right. What do you think it is? Oh, no. These are, <laughs> these are blood vessels. What do you think they might be doing? It's going to the chick to make it be alive. Going to the chick to make it be alive. Let's try something here. <coughs> Let's pretend this is sky, this is ground. And, and in fact, I just did this last night. Let's go put a little pumpkin seed in that ground. Mm -hmm. And then one day, next morning maybe, what comes out? Sun. sun. What's the sun do? 
Make it, makes it, warm. it warm. Makes it warm. And then in a couple of days, we hope maybe what? Rain. Rain. Moisture. Okay. And then we start to see the cells divide, just like we saw there. And then what happens here? Roots. Roots. What do roots do? Who can tell me what the roots do? What do the roots do? They pick up the water. Yeah. From the soil. The food and the water. That's kind of what these little blood vessels are doing. They're just gathering up the food and the oxygen that's come through the pores and the water and taking it to the cells so they can so they have food. Do you know what it's called when these this little thing starts to cells divide? Do you know what that's called? It begins to I'm gonna make the it begins to grow. Have you ever heard this word? Germinate. It begins to germinate. All right, do you see something here? This is where life begins. I didn't want you to think it was a bad germ. When you said you will start seeing the... Little blood vessels? How will we see them? We call that candling. I'm going to come back in a week and we'll flash a light through the end of the egg and we'll be able to see inside the egg. We'll be able to see the blood vessels.